In this video, we're going to be looking at how to use calculus in physics. And ultimately, the tools of calculus are going to clarify the relationship between the kinematic variables, which we saw thus far in this chapter. And they're going to make the relationship a little bit more clear. And so to begin with, we start looking at how they are connected. And what the first observation is, is that the instantaneous velocity is simply the derivative of position. And then the instantaneous acceleration is the derivative of velocity. And so this connection through calculus is going to make clear some of the relationships that we've seen thus far. And so let's go ahead and look at this in this example. Here we are given the position of a car and it's given as a function of time. And so in part A we're being asked what is the car's position after three seconds. But that's just a simple matter of taking our time three seconds, substituting it in, simplifying, and getting our answer. In part B, we're asked to find the car's velocity as a function of time, and now we're going to have to use calculus. Velocity is the derivative of position, and so we write the position function out and denote the prime to know that we're taking a derivative. And since this is a polynomial, we're going to take the derivative term by term, and we're going to use the rules of calculus to do so, which is to say we're going to take our exponent, you turn it into the coefficient, and then drop our exponent by 1. And that's exactly what we would do here, just like in a calculus class. When we simplify, then we get the answer. Now in part C, it's asking how to find the car's speed at 3 seconds, but that's just simply a matter of plugging in the time 3 into our new velocity formula. And so once we substitute it in, simplify, we can see our value here. In D, we're asked to find the car's acceleration as a function of time. And now the acceleration is the derivative of velocity, and we're going to use the velocity formula from part B and take its derivative. Once we do so, we do it again term by term, and then we simply simplify and get our formula for the acceleration. Now note this acceleration is not constant, and that we should have guessed because again, we don't have a degree two polynomial for our position. And so we know that it's not a constant acceleration. In part E, we're asked for the car's acceleration after three seconds, and now it's just a matter of taking our value for time, substituting it in, and simplifying. This next example is going to take a different look, because in this example, what we're being given is the acceleration, and we're going to have to use that to find the velocity in position. Now, since acceleration is the derivative of velocity, that means velocity is the antiderivative of acceleration. So in part A, to find the car's velocity, we need to take the antiderivative of the acceleration function that we're given. And so we do that, we write it out, and we're taking it with respect to time. And so to find the antiderivative of a polynomial, again, we just need to bump up the degree of the exponent and then divide by that degree. And we also need to include c, our constant, any time we take an antiderivative. Now, that constant in math class is often just represented by c, and we'll do so here. But it, in physics, that constant has a meaning. And so let's explore what that is right here. If we plug in the value for time 0 into our velocity formula, what we realize is that the only term left over is a constant. And so that constant is the value of the velocity at time 0, which we typically denote by v0. Realizing that, we'll use the symbol v0 in place of c to let ourselves know that that's the, that, that's the constant term. And in our case, it's actually given to us at 7 meters per second. Now that we have our velocity formula, we can find the formula for the position. And again, we need to take the antiderivative of velocity because velocity is the derivative of position. So position is the antiderivative of velocity. We write that out here. And now it's just a matter of taking the antiderivative term by term, which for polynomials means, again, we bump up the degree of the term and then divide by that degree. And so that gives us also a constant, which now we know is simply the initial position x0. Once we substitute that in, we get a formula for our position, knowing that the initial position is at the origin, say, and is 0. We can finally answer the question that was being asked, how far does the car travel in 3 seconds? And we do that by now substituting the value 3 into our new position formula. We simplify and we get our answer here.